In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, we're gonna be taking a look at the trickster evocation, how to get it, how it plays, what pawns to pair it with, what are the basics of it, what skills to use, equipment to use, etc. So if you've been wondering how to play trickster in this game, watch on for some useful information. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about how to get this vocation. You need to go through the checkpoint rest town gate in order to get there and to get to like the southern half of the map. There is an NPC called Luz. They're kind of like in a temple that you can find on the eastern side. If you speak to this person, then they will give you this vocation. It's one of the quicker advanced vocations to get, and that's where you get it. So let's talk about the role of the trickster in the group. The trickster is essentially the tank of the group. So if you already have a tank, you might want to change the skills they have if they're your main pawn. Or maybe you want to get a different pawn that doesn't have like a taunt skill because tricksters, what they do is they attract enemies to their simulacrum that then the enemies will attack that phantom instead of attacking you or attacking other members of your party so that nobody's taking damage. That's the best case scenario and that's how that's supposed to work. Additionally, they can also support their team with one of their skills that increases the attack damage of people in their group or the damage that they deal. I don't think it's just attack. I'm pretty sure it's spell casting as well. I haven't tested this thoroughly, but it's supposed to buff your team in order to increase the damage that your team is doing. One important thing that I want to note about tricksters is they have zero, precisely zero damage dealing skills. This means that you are essentially going to be distracting enemies with your skills and you're going to be buffing your team and then you're going to try not to get hit in combat. And it, my recommendation, if you want to deal some damage as a trickster, the best way that I have found besides possessing an enemy, which we'll get into that in a minute, is to pick up items and chuck them at people. So there's a way you can use the environment if you got nothing else going on. So obviously a good pairing for a trickster would be like a mage uh, because they're gonna be healing and you will take damage sometimes as a trickster, particularly if you do not go in set up. Um, but you can use, you know, as well, Archer or Thief or whatever, Warrior, Sorcerer, all work well in this, but talking about your main pawn should probably be a mage. So let's talk about the basics of how the Trickster works, the fundamentals. So the first thing you have, your basic attack, if you will, is called the Veiling Fumes. This does almost zero damage, and it essentially taunts the enemy, and it'll taunt the enemy onto you if you do not have a Simulacrum out. If you do have a Simulacrum out, it will taunt the enemy onto it. Anytime you have a simulacrum out and you use something that generates threat, it's going to project that onto your simulacrum. So keep that in mind. You will almost never use Bevailing Fumes. Once you have other skills, it's pretty much useless on the trickster most of the time because it does like zero damage. The only time you'll probably use it is when a monster like falls down and you can hit them in the head for like 1% total damage. So then Ephigial Incense allows you to summon your similar acrom with Triangle or Y depending on your controller. And once this is out, if you generate threat on an enemy, it's going to attack your similar acrom. So you want to put this kind of away from your group if possible so that enemies are not jumping into your group and like accidentally landing your group. So putting it somewhere not next to them is good. Usually once you, you know, get a few ranks into Trickster, you'll drag this into combat with you and then you'll move it around a bunch. I'll get into that in just a second. So then when you gain Invoking Essence, if you press the R1 button by default, I have it mapped to L1 here, you will actually move your Simulacrum to where you are. And if you hold this button down, it will continue to drag it along. And why this is useful is that you it saves you from having to recast it. There is a cast time involved with summoning Simulacrum. And if you need to recast it in combat, you can get beat up by enemies that have all this threat on you all of a sudden because tricksters don't really have any way to like mitigate damage. Like you don't have a damage shield like the Mystic Spear Hand. You don't have a swift step like the Thief. You don't have blocking or something like a fighter or warrior would have. You don't have a way to roll. So you basically need to make sure enemies are hitting that Simulacrum. And if you go into combat without one or it dies in combat, you can be in a bad spot if you can't get another one summoned quickly. So by pressing R1, you can move it. And this is really great. Like maybe you see enemies all charging for it and they're like mid attack animation and then you pull it to you real quick. Well, then the enemies will all miss it and it'll prevent it from taking damage and then they'll come over to where it is and you can just kind of keep baiting them around. And then eventually you'll get Mending Vapors, which allows you to heal your Simulacrum when you move it. And so if you're like dragging it by holding R1 down, it'll continue to heal. And you'll need to do this periodically throughout combat to keep your Simulacrum from dying. Otherwise, you'll have to recast another one and go through that long animation. So when you drag it around, you'll keep healing it and you'll move it periodically to keep healing it. And another thing that you'll be able to do is you'll gain something called Enthralling Aroma, which allows you to essentially stick your Simulacrum onto 
an enemy and then other enemies will then attack that enemy because they're attacking the similar outcome which will allow in damage hitting that enemy and this is very hard to use in my opinion because you have to walk right up to an enemy to use it on them and it can be difficult sometimes it doesn't fire off and usually if you walk right up to an enemy's face you'd probably be better off playing any other class and just attacking them at that point because they'd be dead before you could run up to them and you know put this on them so it's not something that's very easy to use and generally you'll probably use it on like big enemies when there are other small enemies around otherwise you won't if there's if you're only facing like one enemy like a griffin or a big enemy like a cyclops you won't use it because they won't have then anything to attack and they'll attack you or your team so you basically have to use it when there are multiple enemies So stamina management in combat can be a bit tricky for Trickster. It sounds weird because you're not really attacking much. And actually that's kind of why you have stamina management problems sometimes on Trickster because you tend to spam your skills to make sure that you have threat and that uses stamina every time you do that. However, you'll find that most of your stamina consumption is from sprinting in combat. So you're moving around the battlefield trying to avoid enemies, drag your similar acrim around with you. So that's where you're gonna spend a lot of stamina. Um, Again, make sure you're lightweight and you don't have too much equip load on you. That can help with your stamina management, and you can use consumables as well if you need. So talking about the skills that I like to use with this character, I've tested a lot of the skills, and most of them are pretty bad. But the ones that I like are Suffocating Shroud. This is the default skill that you summon, or start with, and it'll kind of like hit an AoE around you, a very large AoE that will then, like, draw threat onto your simulacrum if it's out or you if it's not out and so essentially the way combat works is you're going to drag your simulacrum into combat or you're going to summon it into combat and then hit with this as quickly as you can probably a few times running around gathering up all the enemies so they make sure that they're hitting onto your simulacrum and then once they're all clearly aggroed onto it you're going to be just kind of dragging it around like cat and mouse around the screen while they try and kill it and you try and keep it alive and you'll periodically use that skill to maintain aggro or if any new enemies show up keep hitting with it. Now the next skill you'll probably use somewhat in combat is Aromatic Resurgence and this is a skill that buffs your team with damage and because when you're playing a trickster you aren't dealing any damage yourself you need all the damage you can get from your party so buffing them with damage periodically is good. This will deplete health from them it won't deplete the loss gauge though so it can be healed back up which is why again why it's important to have a mage in your group so they can top them up with healing or anodyne or something like that but you will use this periodically, mostly like in longer fights. And the next skill that I really like is Latching Effigy. And what this does is it allows you to take your summoned simulacrum and chuck it at an enemy and possess them from range. And if it hits them, it'll stay on them and enemies will attack them. But if it misses, keep in mind that you'll have to resummon your simulacrum. So there's kind of some risk reward. Make sure you know you can connect with the target when you use it. This is a better way to possess than enthralling a Roma, in my opinion because you can do it at range, which is much more safe for you. Keep in mind, again, that you only want to use this when there are multiple enemies out, though. You do not want to use it on uh, one enemy, because if that one enemy has nothing to attack, it's going to attack you or the group. And another thing is I like to cast it on weaker enemies, if possible, because that makes the big enemies focus on the little enemies, whereas if you put it on the big enemy, like a giant cyclops or griffin, and there's a bunch of other enemies or something, that griffin or whatever doesn't have anything to aggro, on, aggro onto other than the rest of your group or you because the simulacrum is on it and it can't attack itself. So try and focus on the small enemies if you can when using it. And then the last skill that I like is Espial Incense and this is kind of a, an exploration skill. It's not really a combat skill but it allows you to leave your body and sort of explore in spirit form so that you can see what's around you. Maybe you can like I don't know you see a chest up above you but you don't can't figure out how to, to get up to it. You can rise up to it and see what's around. You can't interact with the chest and open it unfortunately. But you, like, you can look around and maybe find a way up there or give you some hints about what's up there. Or maybe decide it's not even worth going up there. There's not really anything good, etc. But it's very good for exploration and, and it kind of works well with some of the augments that the Trickster has. So the Trickster has an augment called Detection, which allows them to detect uh, Seeker's Tokens and Wakestone Shards. If they're nearby, you'll hear like an audio cue. And it'll get louder like the closer you get to it and then it'll be shining when you get near it and this is really great for exploring i play a lot of times while i'm listening to music when i'm playing this class i do not do that so i can hear this and once you've unlocked this augment too you can use it on other classes which is great it's a good reason to play some trickster in order to get that but 
it kind of works really well with that uh, Espial Incense skill because maybe you hear a, a token somewhere, but you can't figure out where it is. Maybe it's above you, or maybe it's below you. You can use that to figure out where it is safely, which is really handy. Other augments that you want for your Trickster are anything that buff your team. There are a couple augments, one that gives you damage, one that gives you protection, good for your team because they're doing all the heavy lifting here. You're just trying to keep them from getting attacked. And that's really, you know, it besides something that gives you threat. I think Fighter has a, an augment that gives you threat. Threat generation is good, obviously, because you're tanking. Now, equipment-wise, you want to wear, like, the most protective stuff you can because you will get hit periodically, which is quite frustrating um, because you don't really have any way to step out of attacks. Um, but the other thing is, as well, that you upgrading your sensor damage or the the stats on it doesn't really seem to make you deal damage because you don't really deal damage with this build so i'm not sure upgrading your equipment is super necessary i haven't tested this out super thoroughly in terms of like does it make you generate more threat does it make your skills more effective how does it do that i don't quite know because there isn't really a damage component to trickster so just know that if you're playing a trickster you can upgrade your equipment but i in terms of like your weapon but i'm not really sure it matters all that much although upgrading your armor obviously would still be good and rings-wise, you can use something that helps to increase threat or helps make your pawns perform better in combat. So that wraps up our video on the Trickster. This is a very bizarre class. It took me a really long time to get the hang of this one compared to others. And if you're someone who likes to kind of manipulate the battlefield and watch your pawns like do all the work after you've like set them up quite how you want, then this might be a good class for you. It's a very tough class to play, and the fact that it has no damaging skills means it's not going to be for everyone. So that wraps up our trickster guide. I hope you guys got some useful tips from it. If again, if you have any tips to leave for other people, leave them in the comments. If you have questions, leave them there as well, and I will try and answer them as soon as I can.